Thanks very much, Mark. Was that not a great lunch? Should we thank Mark as our sponsor for it? Okay, and as he said, we've got a very international panel. Um, we have speakers from both the United States and from Japan. So everyone's a little bit jet-lagged, but all um, uh, very experienced and knowledgeable. So it's great to have that international perspective. We thought we would start quickly with some vocabulary, because this can divide us as well as bring us together. And then each speaker will do a quick five minute or so presentation and then discussions, because we think there will be a lot of um, potentially interesting or um, controversial elements of our approach toward green open access. So the vocabulary, open access, and public access are terms you're going to be hearing a lot on this panel, as we have already this morning. And it, we thought it might just be helpful to be clear how we're using it, um, these terms. So open access, used around the world, it can describe two flavors, um, gold open access, which is a new business model where articles are paid for upfront through article publication charges or a subsidy of some kind, or green, where um, a subscription article is made available, um, usually after an embargo period and often in manuscript form. Um, but in the US, particularly, I've learned, when people talk about open access, they're often talking only about the gold open access model. And the reason is that public access is a term that's become better known. Um, it can sometimes be synonymous with green open access, but it's a little bit broader. It, it's an approach to ensuring that US federal agency grant recipients can comply with mandates. They're generally free to use their research grants for gold open access publishing fees, but they're encouraged and required to comply um, through a green open access approach. So just keep your, your ear out for those terms, open access, public access. And if you hear open access, think, are we talking gold or green or both? You'll see it used in all sorts of ways. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Ginger Strader from the Smithsonian Institution. She's got an incredibly interesting perspective on this stuff because she runs the Smithsonian University Press, so she's a publisher, but she's also embedded in the Smithsonian Institution, which is one of the funding agencies complying with the OSTP public access mandate. So she brings us the perspective of a funding body as well. Ginger. <laughs> 